Hey guys, and welcome back. In today's episode, we are in the workshop, and that's because we're going to talk about my newest build. Now, if you follow my previous videos, you've heard me mention building a proper 7-inch long-range drone, and well, here it is. Now, this has taken me much longer to complete than I originally expected, and that's because I was waiting on some very special parts to arrive. Now, the frame that I'm using is a 7-inch Deadcat-style iFlight Chimera frame, and it's built around the latest and greatest in HD0 technology. Check this out. In the very front, we have this HD0 V2 camera, which features a half-inch sensor, and I honestly think it's the best camera available for the system currently. But what's really exciting is in the back here. If you look really closely, you're going to see some beautiful red anodized coating. And what that is, is one of the first production units of the 1 watt Freestyle VTX by HD0. Now I'm super excited to have gotten my hands on one of these units, and I cannot wait to share the testing with you guys, because it has been performing very, very well. Now we're going to be talking about both of these components a little bit today, but stay tuned for future videos because we're going to be doing some proper testing of both the camera and of course the VTX, which should be very exciting. But now let's turn our focus back to the build and I'm going to walk you guys through the individual parts that I chose for this quad. Then we're going to talk about the assembly process and a couple little tips and tricks that I discovered along the way. And, you know, I'm going to share with you guys some issues that I had with a couple of the components or solutions that I came up with to fix them. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into it. Here we go. Okay guys, today we're going to be building a 7 inch drone for some long range testing. And the frame we're going to be using is an iFlight Titan Chimera 7. I have a few other parts that I'm going to go through here. So let's go ahead and jump into those first and then we'll get to the frame. So the flight controller we're using is a Mamba F722 MK3. Uh, this has got all the peripherals that I need for my build, so I'm pretty jazzed to match this flight controller. We actually have here is this 4-in-1 F50. It has BL Heli 32. Uh, it's a 50 amp, so it can handle up to 6S. You see the two will just go nicely together like that. And this is going to be a very nice looking build when we're done, and it's going to perform pretty well with these two pieces. So now we'll move on to the motors that I chose to use for this build. I'm actually using the Emax Eco 2s. Uh, these are 2807 and I got them in the 1500 kV. Uh, the reason I did that is I wanted it to be a little bit more flexible as far as battery. I should be able to use 4S batteries as well as 6S batteries. So this would be a really nice uh, long range motor setup. They look really sharp. Uh, you know, got this nice reflective anodized coating, epoxy down here on the wires. I like to see that because actually the wires can break off here sometimes. I've had that happen a few times just from wiggling around or being a little rough with them. So it's nice to see the, the epoxy here. Um, but yeah, these will be pretty nice motors. I'm pretty excited to use those. Come with some stickers, come with some different size bolts depending on the frame thickness. And of course you got your little uh, nut here for the very top. So now we'll go ahead and we'll move on to the frame. Right here, as I said earlier, is the iFlight Titan Chimera 7 frame kit. And let's go ahead and pop that open and see what we're getting into on the inside. Uh, it comes with some cute little stickers. Not sure what we'll do with those. Do something with them, I'm sure. Uh, this is your schematic of the frame and all the parts that you should have. It's probably worth running through to make sure you have all of these parts. This doesn't really come with instructions on how to build it, which is kind of why I'm doing this video overview here. But we'll go ahead and just kind of work our way through it piece by piece. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what we got here. Got a bag of screws, some standoffs, another bag of screws, another bag of screws, another bag of screws, another bag of screws, another bag of screws. Lots of screws. All right, cool. We'll be screwing a lot of things together. Uh, this is going to hold the camera, it looks like. It comes with this cable here, which based on how it looks, I'm thinking has something to do with DJI's system. Uh, this doesn't look like a MIPI cable by HD0 that I'm using. So we probably don't need this. Uh, it comes with a couple battery straps, that's good. We'll probably use both of them to hang on to our big lithium ion batteries. Uh, these are some covers for the wires that you'll put on the arms. Uh, this is pretty cool. This is a GoPro mount uh, for the front of it. I'll probably use that. That'll be neat. Uh, I got some miscellaneous 3D printed hardware for the camera, FBV camera. Uh, I got these sticky plates that go on the top that are rubberized, kind of hold the battery in place. 
that's pretty nice. That's a nice little feature they threw in there. Uh, these are arm protectors here. They, you put them underneath the motor and it kind of gives them little feet as well as protects the arms in case you crash into the sides there. Uh, here's one of the arms here, for example. Uh, where the layers are, if you crash into a lot of things often, you can actually start to separate the layers, which is why these uh, protectors are so important. So I recommend putting those on. You don't have to, of course, but why not? You already have them. Uh, I guess we'll have the arm in my hand here. Um, these are really nice looking arms here. Uh, go ahead and take our digital caliper here and we'll go ahead and measure the arm. Uh, it looks like these are six millimeter arms. A little bigger than six, but they're probably just called six millimeter arms. They're probably at least twice as thick as my current drone. And so that's going to be pretty stable. Uh, more 3D pieces, uh, 3D printed pieces. This is going to hold your receiver and your antennas. Uh, yeah, they give you different options. This is probably the one I'll use because I have a single SMA that comes out the back. Um, but this could be set up for DJI setup, I guess is probably what this one is for. Uh, so here's the actual pieces themselves. We can go ahead and get them laid out in a minute. But you have your, your, your mid plate, your bottom plate, your top plate, and your four arms. So, that guys is the pieces of the iFlight Titan Chimera 7 frame kit that we're going to be building today. And I'm just going to get this set up and we can start to assemble it and we'll see how it looks. Here we go.
So one thing I want to show you guys here is I'm running this, I have a MIPI cable here. I'm going to be doing an HD0 um, digital system for this build here. And this is the MIPI cable. And what I have done was I have run it underneath the ESC. But what I've learned in the past is that these MIPI cables, you can see, you can see how many wires there are here. I mean, there's 20, 20 some wires. And each one of these wires, uh, I mean, you can kind of see from my fingers here, but each one of these wires is nothing more than a couple strands of hair. Um, so they're really kind of sensitive, and you want to be careful if they're if they're vibrating like this. Uh, eventually, they can actually wear through this outer coating, and it will cause the wire to short, which will actually short the connector in here. These little these little pads here can actually short together. Uh, in my experience, my camera or VTX didn't get any damage, but it did ruin the cable, and that caused the video to drop out instantly. Uh, here's a little clip of that from one of my previous videos. Uh, that was very confusing, but basically what I had figured out was this must have been rubbing on the frame, and it caused it to wear. So anyway, so what I did here is I'm going to run it under the ESC just because that's the cleanest. But what I added was this little piece of flat shrink shrink tubing that the wire is going to go through. And so basically once this ESC is squished down, the cable itself is going to be protected by this piece of shrink tube in here. And I'm hoping that will avoid any issues. Uh, additionally, once I actually do install it, I'll make sure to, to secure it in such a way that it's not going to be wiggling around a whole lot anyway. But I just wanted to point that out to you guys. Uh, when you're building something, it's it's smart to think about these cables and how they can be affected. Okay, guys, so we're going to go ahead and talk about soldering the motor wires to your ESC. I'm using a 4-in-1 Mamba stack here, and I want to make all the wires as neat as possible so the final build looks super clean. Uh, and basically what I've decided to do is kind of a rainbow effect here. That'll look really nice, but also it will keep the wires out of the zones here, which uh, sticks and branches and all sorts of stuff could get stuck in. And so basically the shortest wire is going to be the first wire here. The closest wire is going to be the shortest wire. And then we're going to kind of work our way out to the end. And that's going to give us this nice rainbow pattern. So essentially the first thing I did was I mounted the motor onto the end of the arm. And then I brought the wires up nice and even with each other, and I zip-tied them right here. And the reason I did that was just to keep it firm, so when you're working with the wires, they're not moving all over the place. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to flip the quad around. And I'm just going to go ahead and show you how I got those wires to line up like that. So again, you can see here, I haven't zip-tied it yet, so let me just grab a zip-tie. Slide it underneath here. And I might end up cutting these zip ties off in the end um, when I remount everything. I haven't conformal coated uh, the bottom of this ESC, so I will be taking it off to do that later. But I just wanted to go ahead and get these wires lined up and even soldered before I do that. Because of course you want to conformal coat all of it over the solder. The first wire I'm going to do is the closest wire here. And essentially what I do is having a pair of tweezers like this is really helpful when you're doing this sort of thing. But I'm going to go ahead and just make a little rainbow pattern like this, you see? And then I'm going to pinch here, okay? And I'm going to bend the wire kind of like that. And what that's going to allow me to do is bring it right down like that, okay? And this is going to be the first part of your rainbow. Um, I can even make this a little shorter. Um, I just pinch a little further up, then it can be more like that, you see. And we can worry about the shape later. Uh, but you can see right there, that's going to give me a nice little rainbow shape. And we're going to go ahead and we will cut the wire here. So I'm just using a pair of uh, little wire cutters. You can come right in here and cut your wire. Now remember, you want to have everything as correct as possible before you cut, because uh, you can really only cut once. If you cut it too short, you've cut it too short, and then you have a whole new problem. 
So make sure that when you cut, you are confident about your setup. And that's why it's helpful to kind of walk through this and make sure it looks exactly how you want it. And also kind of why I'm talking through it with you guys right here, right now. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and we'll grab this middle wire here. And we're gonna do just about the same thing. Uh, so we're gonna bring it over and let's see here, I'm just going to try to make it as neat as possible. And the same idea, we're going to go ahead and bring it down here and we'll twist it back up. Okay. And we can go ahead and just clip that here now. Oop. Okay. And then our third wire, same thing. Kind of follow this uh, rainbow pattern of the first two wires down. And clip that. Cool. Well, there you go. That's the general idea. Um, when I'm soldering it, I'll probably reposition them a tiny bit just to make them as nice as possible. But I just wanted to go ahead and show you the general idea of how you can do it. But yeah, so anyway, that's that. I'm going to go ahead and finish this part up and we will continue forward. Okay, so now we're just going to do a quick overview of where I've placed each of the components and how I chose to wire them. You can see the flight stack is soft mounted to the frame here in the middle, and I have the majority of the wiring coming off the back. In the back of the quad, we have the Crossfire RX, the GPS module, and of course the VTX. Moving up to the front, you can see I've wired a V-Fly Finder 2 buzzer and mounted it here behind the camera. Next to the buzzer, you can see we have the wiring harness, which connects the ESC and the current sensor to the flight controller. And here I've just used some soft sticky tack to hold on to the MIPI cable. In the front, you can see we've mounted our HD0 micro camera. This is actually the V1 version, and I'll be installing the V2 camera, which I have now in a later video. And moving to the back of the frame, here we are, the HD0 1 watt Freestyle VTX. This VTX is actually a relatively large VTX, but the Tremere 7 frame is so big itself that there's no problems with fitment. You can see it hangs a little bit over the edge, but from a cooling perspective, that's actually going to be beneficial, as this VTX does run pretty hot. So this VTX is going to be an absolutely perfect choice for this build. Well, there you have it, guys. This is my iFlight Chimera 7 long-range build. Stay tuned because my next video coming out shortly is all about the HD01 Watt VTX. Got some very cool testing I can't wait to share with you guys. And then I'm going to be doing some follow-up videos about tuning this quad, uh, troubleshooting a sensor issue. I'm going to be doing some long-range battery comparisons using 4S, 5S, and 6S lithium-ion packs that I built. And then we're going to talk about upgrading signal, range, and quality. So exciting stuff coming up. Stay tuned, guys. We'll see you in the next video. John A. Cowboy, signing out.